Hello, my name is Alex Mattingly, and I'm the second affirmative speaker. Uh, I'm going to extend the affirmative claims of my partner, David, and I'm going to start off with a quote by Jeremy Rifkin, who wrote the book, The Hydrogen Economy. Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. It makes up 75% of the mass and 90% of its molecules. Efficient, efficiently harnessing it as a source of power would provide humanity with a virtually unlimited source of energy. If we could harness the most abundant element in the universe, we wouldn't have to worry about that eventual switch over to a new source of energy once the old one runs out. Not only that, but hydrogen is the perfect solution, solution to our current energy provider, gasoline and petroleum. Hydrogen can replace it in every, every aspect, ranging from internal combustion engines to electrically driven motors, and it can even be used as jet fuel. Um, from the same book by Jeremy Rifkin, the United States, which is estimated to have approximately 195 billion barrels of ultimately recoverable reserves and has already produced 159 billion of those barrels of oil. If our rapid oil consumption continues, we are soon going to be competing with China and India over who gets oil. The fact that we rely so heavily on a non-renewable energy source is sad, considering that we have the technology, money, and power to develop viable alternative energy sources like hydrogen. Um, some hydrogen is already being produced on a small scale by the harnessing of solar, wind, hydro, geothermal, and other renewable forms of energy to produce the electricity needed to separate out hydrogen from water. Uh, the government needs to provide more funding towards hydrogen technology. It is a renewable energy source that our country will eventually be switching over to. Clearly, the United States needs to start working on uh, curbing our gasoline consumption, and while hybrid vehicles are a good alternative, uh, they too are eventually going to be replaced by a renewable fuel source. Um, you may be wondering about the cost of hydrogen fuel right now, and it is currently about $4.99 for the amount of hydrogen equivalent to a gallon of gasoline. Uh, that price is currently too high for most consumers wishing to switch over to renewable energy. Not only that, but as I said before, only a small amount of the current hydrogen that we are using is being made by renewable energy sources. So if we fund the gov or if the government gives more funding to hydrogen, they'll be able to um, fund more research into getting power from renewable energy sources. Um, also from the hydrogen economy, when wind power drops to 1.5 cents per kilowatt in the next few years, electrically generated hydrogen using wind power will be competitive with gasoline. Uh, the biggest threat for a hydrogen vehicle being developed is the electric vehicle. Uh, many people argue that since we are trying to make our energy green to produce electricity, to convert it to water, to convert to hydrogen, why not just use that electricity to plug in and power an electric vehicle? That's a good point, but electric is not the solution. It still has many flaws, and its main one is that it can't be used in airplanes and other forms of transportation that require a form of combustion. Not only that, but the ranges of electric vehicles are still not economically viable for people that don't live and commute in the city. Um, uh, then again, a more likely scenario is that <coughs> dual fuel automotive systems will be developed that can run on either gasoline or hydrogen as the hydrogen infrastructure is being developed. That's from uh, hydrogencarsnow.com. Uh, the switch over to a hydrogen-based economy would not be sudden. It would take decades to transition what we already have to run on hydrogen. So we are not proposing that we just immediately switch our fuel over to hydrogen. We need slowly to ease into it and to do more research to make it viable and a truly green energy source. Uh, we are proposing that hydrogen should slowly be installed in the previously existing network of gas stations so that the government doesn't have to spend billions on developing a new structure to support the fuel. We will eventually need to switch over to a renewable form of energy, and when we do so, the United States will fly through it smoothly if our plan is upheld. Even the major gasoline companies are taking initiatives to prepare for a hydrogen future. They know that fossil fuels are coming to an end. Uh, here's a quote from the British Petroleum Executive about the future energy use. Uh, John Brown, the CEO of British Petroleum, is even more bullish, forecasting that 50% of total energy demand in the world will be met by solar and other renewable resources by 2050. And uh, Watts from uh, Shell, an executive from Shell, in the 21st century, said Watts, coal, oil, and natural gas, the great fossil fuels that had propelled the world into an industrial era, era would give way to a revolutionary new regime based on hydrogen. He continued to say that Shell has already committed up to a billion dollars to making the transition to a renewable resource economy. And an executive from Texaco said, he observed that 
that greenery, innovation, and market forces are shaping the future of our industry and propelling us inexorably towards hydrogen energy. California already has hydrogen filling stations in Los Angeles and the Bay Area, and with the help of the governor, he plans to have nearly 200 completed by 2010. That goal is looking a little short from what he planned, but the hydrogen highway in California is expanding. With more resources from the federal government, hydrogen could start to pick up and spring up in more states and we start to become a viable energy source. Not only will using hydrogen lessen our country's dependence on foreign oil, it will also lessen our greenhouse gas emissions. This is something that was rather unmentioned before, but hydrogen fuel is completely free of hazardous emissions. And the only waste generated from the combustion of it is water in the form of steam. And as far as uh, what uh, Derek said about the Tesla Roadster, I know for a fact that he was comparing that to an economy car, which is about like twenty, forty thousand dollars at the most. And the Tesla Roadster is a hundred thousand dollar luxury car. And even with that, it has lithium ion batteries, which are the newest battery technology. It only gets about 100 to 150 miles to the charge, whereas the car he was comparing it to, the hydrogen vehicle, he said got around 260, I believe. Um, that's about it. Thank you.